Hi everyone, welcome to Real Science Challenge. I'm Ken Louie, science teacher and talking head. Talking best practice in science education and broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. Now, here's a test that I gave this past year that completely changed the way I structured all my tests immediately afterwards. Now the test doesn't appear that long. It's got two sheets, double-sided. It's got normal size font. It's got lots and lots of white space. Check that out. And it's only got six questions. And our science classes run for 70 minutes. So technically, lots of time to answer six questions. But I am using standards-based assessment. And therefore, my students need to demonstrate a greater depth in written responses on their tests to reach the next level of proficiency, because I use proficiency scales on standards-based assessment. Therefore, this test actually did take a long time. Now, not all students were able to finish, and I felt bad for those who just left out details. You know, these are strong students who just ran out of time. And of course, some students came back during lunch or in the morning to finish the sessions they missed. And of course, it's possible that those students discussed other questions from the test with other students before coming back in to finish their test. So in the end, I realized this just wasn't working. And I realized I had to either shorten my tests even more or split my tests up. And I'll tell you what I did. And all this in order to while still maintaining a standards-based assessment. I'll tell you in a second, but before I continue, handouts for this episode are available at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP62. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, this is a general, overly simplified proficiency scale published by the BC Ministry of Education that serves as the jumping off point for standards-based assessment in my science class. So on this proficiency scale, an emerging means that a student demonstrates an initial understanding of the concepts. Developing means a partial understanding. Proficient means a complete understanding. And extending means a sophisticated understanding. However, what initial and partial and complete and sophisticated understanding means to me on a test is not how many questions students get right, but the depth of the details in their responses. So for example, questions that assess, let's say, a student's ability to communicate or write an argument. So for example, a question like this on communication. Okay? I look for a student's ability to write a claim, provide evidence from the graph, and provide some sort of scientific reasoning, and to write a rebuttal or a counter-argument to their claim. If a student's able to do all that, they've achieved extending. For questions that assess a student's ability to process and analyze information, so for example, this session says processing and analyzing, I usually give four questions of increasing complexity. You know, the most basic question, the first question, is usually based on information all students should know because I've harped on it so much in class already. The next question, it's usually a little bit more complicated. It may require students to have done some practice in class. The next question over here is a little bit more complicated, and so on and so forth. So therefore, when you get to the last question out of the four, this would require a bigger commitment of time and thought. As a result, students were expending a lot of time trying to demonstrate the depth of thought in all sections of my test, which meant they were running out of time. So therefore, they couldn't provide me all the details that they had wanted, all the details they had studied. So check this out. These are some of my actual students and their tests. So this student totally rocked the first section, got extending, and then the next section got developing. In fact, the last section, they just left blank. They just didn't write anything at all. They failed to write something significant. Same thing here. The student totally rocked the first section, got progressively worse, just ran out of time. And I know, I know these students are strong students. Now, I could just cut out some questions, but that would kind of cut into what I want to do, which is to have students demonstrate depth of knowledge. 
So instead of just cutting out or shortening questions, I split up the tests, my, my future tests, into sections corresponding to the skill I'm trying to assess. So for example, on one day, students might write a section on processing analyzing. So this is, a, this is my energy test that I gave afterwards. Processing analyzing would have questions based on calculations. So that's one day, processing analyzing. The next day, students might write a different section, maybe one on communication. So just one competency again. And so they might write an argument based on some data. You know, it all depends on which skill I want to assess on the test. You know, I tell students ahead of time which section they'll be writing on the day of the test. And on that day, I give students about 30 to 40 minutes to write the section. Now, by doing this, students don't have to feel rushed to complete sections, and they're given enough time to give all the details they need. Students also don't have to come back to finish their tests, and I avoid the problem of students coming back to write the test only to rewrite all the other sections of the test because they've had the opportunity to look over their notes and discuss the details with their classmates. That's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button or leave a comment below. And handouts once again are at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP62. Thanks for watching. Let's talk science education again soon.